Cambridge English First Two, published by Cambridge University Press and Cambridge English Language Assessment, 2016. This recording is copyright. CD two. This is the Cambridge English First listening test. Test seven. I am going to give you the instructions for this test. I shall introduce each part of the test, and give you time to look at the questions. At the start of each piece, you will hear this sound. You will hear each piece twice. Remember, while you are listening, write your answers on the question paper. You will have five minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the separate answer sheet. There will now be a pause. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. You will hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions one to eight, choose the best answer: A, B, or C. Question one. You hear two friends talking about a laptop computer. That's a cool computer, is it new? I bought it a while back, actually. Best thing I ever did. It does look good, but I like the one I have now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But if you had one like mine, after twenty-four hours, I swear you'd never want to go back to your old one. Really? Why's that? Well, there are just so many fantastic features. I'd let you borrow it, but I just can't live without it. It must have been expensive, though. Not really, considering how much it can do. That's a cool computer, is it new? I bought it a while back, actually. Best thing I ever did. It does look good, but I like the one I have now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But if you had one like mine, after twenty-four hours, I swear you'd never want to go back to your old one. Really? Why's that? Well, there are just so many fantastic features. I'd let you borrow it, but I just can't live without it. It must have been expensive, though. Not really, considering how much it can do. Question two. You hear two students talking about a play they have just seen. That was good, wasn't it? Not bad. I wasn't sure about the script, though. I'm not sure people ever really spoke like that, even in those days. Yeah, you may be right there. But the actors coped with it, didn't they? They were pretty convincing, I thought. They had poor material to work with, but I'm with you on that. I don't think anyone could have done better. And the set design was unusual, wasn't it? Just a bit too unusual for me, I'm afraid. I think something more traditional would have been less distracting. Yeah, maybe you're right. That was good, wasn't it? Not bad. I wasn't sure about the script, though. I'm not sure people ever really spoke like that, even in those days. Yeah, you may be right there, but the actors coped with it, didn't they? They were pretty convincing, I thought. They had poor material to work with, but I'm with you on that. I don't think anyone could have done better. And the set design was unusual, wasn't it? Just a bit too unusual for me, I'm afraid. I think something more traditional would have been less distracting. Yeah, maybe you're right. Question three. You hear two people talking about a friend. I saw Mike the other day. Oh, how was he? Seems to be enjoying his new job. Oh, good. He never has trouble making new friends, does he? Well, he doesn't really talk much about himself until you get to know him. I suppose. But he's very easygoing. Whatever goes wrong in his life, he seems to stay cheerful. Well, that's true. Nothing much seems to upset him, does it? But I'm not sure the new job is really him. 
he'd be better off long term in a job where he can help others. Only time will tell. He needs to give it a try. I saw Mike the other day. Oh, how was he? Seems to be enjoying his new job. Oh, good. He never has trouble making new friends, does he? Well, he doesn't really talk much about himself until you get to know him. I suppose. But he's very easygoing. Whatever goes wrong in his life, he seems to stay cheerful. Well, that's true. Nothing much seems to upset him, does it? But I'm not sure the new job is really him. He'd be better off long term in a job where he can help others. Only time will tell. He needs to give it a try. Question four. You hear a lecturer talking to some of his students about their history project. Well, the deadline's not for a while yet, so there's plenty of time for you to choose your topic for your 19th century history project and read up on it. There's been a lot written on this period that you'll find useful, I'm sure. Books are a great source of information, as well as the internet, of course, but check your facts carefully and use reliable websites. Also, make sure you come and see me if there's anything that's unclear or you think I can help you with. Straight after a lecture is a good time to catch me. And finally, good luck, everybody. Well, the deadline's not for a while yet, so there's plenty of time for you to choose your topic for your 19th century history project and read up on it. There's been a lot written on this period that you'll find useful, I'm sure. Books are a great source of information, as well as the internet, of course, but check your facts carefully and use reliable websites. Also, make sure you come and see me if there's anything that's unclear or you think I can help you with. Straight after a lecture is a good time to catch me. And finally, good luck, everybody. Question 5. You hear two TV sports presenters talking about their work. We started off by covering the swimming championships together last year, didn't we? And I reckon that helped us build an essential rapport with each other and the viewers. Presenting's not something you can learn, though. It has to be natural, like adopting a suitably sympathetic expression when you're announcing disappointing results. Well, I'd say presenters do best when they're making it look fun and spontaneous, even if they're actually sticking to a script. Nobody likes seeing presenters who aren't having a good time, and they need to have that connection with whoever's watching. And the relevant subject knowledge always helps too. <laughs> you're right. We started off by covering the swimming championships together last year, didn't we? And I reckon that helped us build an essential rapport with each other and the viewers. Presenting's not something you can learn, though. It has to be natural, like adopting a suitably sympathetic expression when you're announcing disappointing results. Well, I'd say presenters do best when they're making it look fun and spontaneous, even if they're actually sticking to a script. Nobody likes seeing presenters who aren't having a good time, and they need to have that connection with whoever's watching. And the relevant subject knowledge always helps too. <laughs> You're right. Question six. You hear a woman talking about a radio programme. Well, it's a program that's on every week about the countryside. It can get a little boring, but I listen to it anyway, as I always have the radio on when I'm driving home from work. I was curious when they started talking about a village, because it all sounded rather familiar. And then I realized they were talking about somewhere I'd been to on a family holiday as a child. I turned the volume up then, because I didn't want to miss a word of it, not because I didn't know quite a lot about the village already— I just wanted to know what they thought about it. Well, it's a program that's on every week about the countryside. It can get a little boring, but I listen to it anyway, as I always have the radio on when I'm driving home from work. I was curious when they started talking about a village, because it all sounded rather familiar. And then I realized they were talking about somewhere I'd been to on a family holiday as a child. I turned the volume up then because I didn't want to miss a word of it, 
not because I didn't know quite a lot about the village already. I just wanted to know what they thought about it. Question 7. You hear two music students talking about an assignment they have to do. That talk about next year's assignment was good, but I'm not sure I understood everything. I like the sound of having to perform a song or instrumental piece and record it in the studio. And you can get help from your team, thank goodness. The technical side's not my strong point. But then there was something about a commentary. Yes, you have to write a long commentary on it, saying how you organised everything and how you overcame difficulties. But are we supposed to also say how we think it went? You know, analyse our own performance? Hmm, I can ask my sister. She did it two years ago. That talk about next year's assignment was good, but I'm not sure I understood everything. I like the sound of having to perform a song or instrumental piece and record it in the studio. And you can get help from your team, thank goodness. The technical side's not my strong point. But then there was something about a commentary. Yes, you have to write a long commentary on it, saying how you organised everything and how you overcame difficulties. But are we supposed to also say how we think it went? You know, analyse our own performance. Hmm, I can ask my sister. She did it two years ago. Question 8. You hear a writer talking about a book she wrote which has been turned into a film. Of course, it's wonderful when your book is made into a film or a TV series. It's the greatest compliment. But the hardest thing for a writer is handing your book over to someone else and letting their ideas take over. I've done it four times now and it doesn't get any easier. When I met the current director, I thought we'd be working together, but he listened to my views of how the film should be made, then completely ignored them. Despite that, though, he's done my writing justice and I'm glad he didn't listen to me. Of course, it's wonderful when your book is made into a film or a TV series. It's the greatest compliment. But the hardest thing for a writer is handing your book over to someone else and letting their ideas take over. I've done it four times now and it doesn't get any easier. When I met the current director, I thought we'd be working together. But he listened to my views of how the film should be made, then completely ignored them. Despite that, though, he's done my writing justice, and I'm glad he didn't listen to me. That is the end of part one.